Hello there and welcome to the first paper from the October 2020 series. Here we're looking at question 9. So figure 2 shows a sketch of curve C with the equation f of x equals 4 x squared minus 2 e to the minus 2x. Show that f dash of x equals this expression here. So we're looking to differentiate this now. So let's differentiate it using the product rule. Now uh, the 4 can just kind of stay alone at the front, uh, that's always going to be multiplied by 4, so let's now write it as 4, brackets, differentiate the first function, so that's 2x, leave the second function alone, and then it's going to be plus 4 again, leave the first function alone this time, and then differentiate the second function, so that's going to be minus 2 e to the minus 2x. Let's now factorise out the e to the minus 2x, and it's going to be 8x plus, uh, now it's going to be minus 8x squared and minus 16, no, plus 16 because we have a double negative there. And let's now factorise out the 8, so it's 8e to the minus 2x, and then it's going to be minus x squared, so we'll start with the 16. 2 plus x minus x squared. Yeah, that's what we got here. Lovely, good stuff. So that's answered to part A. Let's now move on to part B. Hence, find in the simplest form the exact coordinates of the stationary points of C. So for stationary points, oh, we've, um, we've, we haven't differentiated there yet. So um, for stationary points, f dash of x equals 0, which means, therefore, that 8e to the minus 2x 2 plus x minus x squared equals 0. Now, e to the x can never equal 0, so you can always just divide by e to the minus 2x on both sides here, because e to the minus 2x can never equal 0. You could also cancel out the 8 from both sides as well. And if we move everything onto the other side, we get x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. Let's now factorise x minus 2, x plus 1. And then we'll find our two x answers, so x equals 2, x equals minus 1. Now we've got to go back and work out what the y value is. So when x equals 2, the y value is going to equal 4 times 2 squared. Um, 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 2 is 2, and then it's e to the minus 4 because two time, minus 2 times the x value of 2 is minus 4, so it's going to be 8e to the minus 4. So the first coordinate is going to be 2, 8e to the minus 4. And the second coordinate is going to be when x equals minus 1, so that's going to be y equals 4 times 1, minus 1 squared is 1, minus uh, 2 is minus 1 now, and then it's going to be e to the 2, because minus 1 times minus 2 is just 2. So it's going to therefore be the coordinate of minus 4 e to the 2. So it's minus 1, minus 4 e to the 2. And there we are. That's the final answer for both of our sets of coordinates here. OK, let's now move on to part C. So figure 2 shows a sketch of curve C with the equation uh, f of x equals what we've just worked with. Uh, the function h, so the function g and the function h are defined by g of x equals 2 lots of f of x and h of x equals 2 lots of f of x minus 3, but only where x is greater than or equal to 0. Find the range of g and the range of f. So the range of h. So what we might find helpful is those two minimum and maximum points that we had before. First one's going to be minus 1, um, minus 4, e to the 2. And this one up here is going to be 2, 8e to the minus 4. OK, so... Let's now find the range of the function g. The range of the function g would just be it's 2 times f of x, so that will stretch it upwards and downwards by a scale factor of 2. So the minimum point will now be at minus 8e to the minus, to e to, at minus 8 e to the 2, but it looks like the maximum won't ever be reached because that function on the left-hand side will just keep on increasing. So the range for g is just going to be g of x is less than or equal to minus 8 
e to the 2. Moving on to part 2 now. Now part 2 is a little bit different because it's only when x is greater than or equal to 0. And that will be from this point here. So we need to work out this intersection with the y-axis first. So if we put 0 in for this function here, it's going to be 4 times minus 2. So that will be minus 8. <clears throat> because e to the power of 0 is just 1. So what we now need to do is apply um, this transformation to the minimum point at 0, minus 8, and the maximum point at 2, 8, e to the minus 4. So if we now put h of x in the middle, and on the lower side, I'm going to stretch it down by a scale factor of 2, and then minus another 3 from it, so stretch it by a scale factor 2 again, down to minus 16, and then decrease it by another 3, that will be now minus 19 on the lowest point of this graph. And then on the highest point of this graph will be at 8e to the minus 4, so now if we stretch that up by a factor of 2, that will be 16e to the minus 4, and then minus 3, 16e to the minus 4, minus 3. So there we are, that's the range of h, and above is the range of g. Remember the range is just the potential set of y coordinates from the minimum point to the maximum point. So there we are, that's our answer for question 9 there, with 9 marks in total. Let's now move on to question 10.